Now that we have learned how to create different looks and how to develop effectively a show lock, let's go and look a little bit further down the line and see how to use it correctly in the final color grading process. What is very important to understand is that our look, our show lot, is locked. So the way how we're going to introduce correction to this show light is by introducing a CDL in front of the show light. So this is very important to know. So you're going to always have to apply CDL in front, not after, if we are going to go and tweak this image further. Also, it is important for you to understand that by using this process, we have also separated our grading process into different color zones. Now, let me explain you what that means. What we begin with is a very wide and large gamut camera native color space that also has a very big dynamic range. Digital cameras today capture more color and dynamic range than what we can display. So what we have to do is we have to reduce this wide camera space onto like a display color space. First, for the reason that all our color grading tools are actually made for display color space and they're going to work in much more effective way when we have converted that space. And then at the end, we have to output it to a particular color space. In our case, we work at Rec. 709 or in P3. The CDL is best applied to the native camera color space. If we apply a CDL to that wide color space, which is also log, we're going to get the best and cleanest results simply because lift gamma again works in the best way with that material. Color Lab does the job of conversion from wide camera color space into display color space, enabling us then to work in a much more efficient way with the secondaries, with the for example, qualifiers, and also later with some windows, with power windows. And then, since Colorlab natively works in 709 output space, we can just, you know, leave it with it out of space and we can just go and carry on with the outputting and mastering to it. However, it is very important to understand that with Colorlab, as long as we have access to the original camera native data, we can also output to a much wider output color space, which is called Rec 2020 and HDR 10, which is used for HDR. And this is why Color Lab HDR exists, so that you can take existing grade and just output it and stretch it to a much wider and much bigger dynamic range screens, the HDR screens. Let me show you how that works in practice. So we're going to go and open DaVinci Resolve. And if you have followed the classes, you're going to be able to find your timeline, which is called 60s look. So basically, this is a good look, you know, just to begin with, you know, that we can show you how practically this would be working. So first of all, what we have here is a color lab and we have, you know, created the look. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to export this lot. By default, this lot is going to export into your lot folder into a folder called color lab. And we're going to call it 60s CL. So basically, this is my look for the 60s. But in order for us to be able to see this lot, we have to go into color management, scroll down and say um, update lists. So when we do that, uh, DaVinci Resolve is going to reload all of the lookup tables and make them available to us in our list. Another thing which is also important to do is to select 3D lookup table interpolation to be tetrahedral instead of trilinear. OK, we're going to save that. Now we're going to go and reset this node grade, right mouse click, go into our 3D LUTs, color lab, and then you're going to select your 60 CL look. So then we have exactly the same look with a difference that is going to work much faster and in real time. Okay, so let's see how we're going to work now. 
as you can see here in the node one we are still in the native wide camera gamut okay so what we need to do now is use this node to finesse our look so for example I want to go and apply a little bit more contrast by bringing my shadows down opening my gamma a little bit okay what I can do is I can then you know maybe cool it down a little bit and then I'm just gonna bring some of the warmth into the skin that could be like an interesting way for us you know just to give it a little bit more of a feel that works very well okay then what I'm going to do and say okay I'm very happy with this kind of as a starting point as a look and then I'm gonna go and open a serial node after my show light so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start working with my secondaries. The first secondaries that you should do should be curves because curves usually give us a cleaner result than qualifiers. So let's say I want to increase the saturation of this radio. So I have just swiped in hue versus saturation curve. I'm going to go and lift basically the saturation of that radio so as you can see like I've really helped it you know get nice and hot and more saturated then I'm gonna go and for example use one qualifier so for qualifier we're gonna select here just a HSL qualifier and I'm just gonna go and swipe onto the blue of her shirt it's pretty good but now I'm gonna go and use my clean white to help expand you know some of that cue some of that qualifying of that blue shirt and then I'm gonna go and bring more saturation so now I got a little bit more saturation on that blue shirt so you can see it looks beautiful like you know the shirt now got a little bit more vivid the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and work with my skin now because I am working here in my display color space I am able to work in a very good and, and efficient way because let me show you the difference when I for example pull a key for the skin here I'm very very precise you see my my skin gets selected really nicely with just a little bit clean white I'm able to pick up on skin really well however let's say if I was to go and use this node which is basically you know like a still white gamut node and I was to try to apply you know the same effect I was trying to pick up the skin what would happen I would select the majority of image simply because there is not enough contrast in saturation it for my tools to work and this is the reason why we have to work in this order we are much more effective and much cleaner if we work in this way that we basically use this first node just to apply a CDL use our show light to convert into display space and then carry on working in a display space because our tool will give us much quicker and cleaner result so what I'm gonna do here so that I have selected this skin I'm going to go into here into the tab 2 of my primary and there I have this MD or mid-tone detail and I'm gonna go and reduce the mid-tone detail to let's say minus 30 and let me show you the effect that I get from there there we go so you see it kind of cleans up my skin a little bit and this is beautiful especially if you work in 4k okay so now I got basically you know my skin sorted I created some color contrast by helping radio and her shirt now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do windows at the end and windows always come as last so I'm gonna go and apply nice and very soft circular window that is gonna just go and fall on her face and give her a little bit more of a key light and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and open another window where I'm going to go and you know just drag it like this from the top and I'm gonna go and you know just put a, like a little bit like you know gradient from the right top corner so you see it just helps me kind of bring a little bit more depth into the shot now all I have to do is I have to go into the timeline output blanking select 239 for my widescreen and there we go we have a fantastic looking like a you know shot with all of the details that are necessary done to it but in a very very fast way by preserving the image quality and by being able to create clean keys and not really causing too much damage to the image 
Now, let's say we are happy with this looking SDR and now we want to export it to HDR. As long as we have created this 3D LUT with the color lab, we are going to be able to do so as long as we have the original camera data, as long as we start with a very wide gamut image, we are going to be able to preserve it even though we went into the smaller color space because Da Vinci works in float. So all of the data is still here. So what we're going to do is we're going to open another serial node and we will drop ColorLab HDR. This one we're going to just say PQ1000, which is the maximum brightness of 1000 and Rec 2020. So what this does is basically converts this look to HDR seamlessly. And this is the way how we're going to be able to work so that we grade everything in SDR and then quickly translate it into HDR for us to be able to quickly output you know, shots in this format as well. This is just to explain what ColorLab HDR does. If you ever do work in HDR, check out this plugin as well.